Good evening parents and welcome to Lake Mary High School's Open House. My name is Ms. Colleen Went. I'm an assistant principal here at Lake Mary and right now you should be in your child's Rams period class. I'd like to let you know a little bit about our Rams period class. This class is to be used as a study hall to catch up on missed work, do current work, get ahead in your studies, or get extra help when needed. It is also a time where students will build and foster relationships with their teachers. And it also can be used to promote school spirit during certain events like homecoming. During Rams period, students have the opportunity to receive passes from teachers in classes in which they are struggling with. These passes will be given to Rams period teachers and then they can release their students to go to the teacher's class that they are struggling in. So this will also double as a tutoring class as needed. The period is to be kept as a quiet time so that students can be productive in their studies and be successful in either getting ahead or meeting the needs of the problems that they have in other classes. Also, students are assigned to this class alphabetically by grade level. Uh, it is created predominantly by grade level 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th separated. They normally stay with the same teacher for the same four years. And tardies and skipping, just like every other class, will be applicable. When talking about the RAMS passes, just to reiterate, students are able to get the passes from teachers that they need extra help in and go to that class for tutoring. This is also a teacher-based decision and depends on the student's need. The passes are made in triplicate and given to the student, the RAMS teacher, and the teacher that requests them for help. And again, excessive tardies and skipping will result in disciplinary action. Parents, if you have any questions regarding the RAMS period and the expectations of RAMS period, please talk to your teachers at this time. Thank you. Looking good. Yeah, you're hot and you know it. You are all dressed up and you have hot wedding cred. What would you do if we took the wedding out of your cred and put you here? Now you're just hot and not dressed for the party. Oops, there goes your wedding cred. Yeah, all that hot wedding cred just went down the drain, didn't it? Okay, so you're cool. You definitely have street cred. Nobody is as gangsta as you are right now. You know you're looking so smart in your clothes. Man. You are smart and cool, all at the same time, until you are here. All that coolness just disappeared. Your street cred just left you and got a new address. All right, so what are we talking about? What is the meaning of all this cred talk? Well. You only have credibility when you wear the right things in the right places. We are going to introduce you to school cred. What is and isn't appropriate in school this year? First, school cred starts with the right gear on your head. No school cred student will have bandanas, caps, or hoods. Good school cred will have hair that's uncovered. Now for the upper garments. The following items are prohibited. Halter tops, tube tops, backless dresses, spaghetti straps, and tank tops. So what will give you the proper school cred? All garments must have a collar and or sleeves. We know you love those low cut shirts but in order to have school cred, you need modesty. That means that your undergarments are not seen. Hey, that's why they are called undergarments after all. Total Street Cred loves that the shirts don't touch the lower portion of your pants. Yeah, we know. The look is good. But remember, you are working on your school cred now. 
And now for the lower, lower, lower part of the dress code. Those pajamas sure are comfy, but they are for sleep cred, not school cred. Your street cred with your booty showing is no good here. Undergarments and the buttocks must remain entirely covered even while seated. Cheer shorts and dance shorts are great when you are cheery or dancing. But in order to have school cred, dresses, skirts, and shorts must be at least mid-thigh or below in length. Rips, tears above mid-thigh are not permitted. The waistband of pants, shorts, or skirts must be worn and secured between the hips and the waist. Bet you didn't know you have foot cred. Oh yeah, awesome foot to make up the total school cred package. In order to have the correct footwear, you need to make sure that cleats, slippers, and shoes with wheels stay out of the school cred turf. What you need is shoes that are safe and appropriate so you can soak up all that knowledge. Finally, no outfit is complete without accessories. In order to complete your street cred look, make sure you keep dog collars for the dogs. Keep your wallet chains for the street cred look. And keep chains that connect parts of your body, well, don't do that to yourself. It just looks painful. You get no cred for that. So yeah, all this talk about cred. You've got cred, but you just need to make sure you have the right cred in the right place. Wedding cred is for formal times, street cred for hanging out with your friends after school or on the weekends school cred just makes sense during school hours so there you have it you're totally on your way to being the coolest school cred student at school this year